If you were to strike up a conversation with another coaster fan, I bet that your conversation will somehow wind up talking about airtime. It's arguably the most exciting type of force you'll experience on any roller coaster. Sure, I can love some good, strong, positive G's, but for the most part, I'm looking for that coaster that'll deliver the best airtime moments. First things first, if you're a coaster newbie, you could be curious as what airtime means. Well, when you ride a roller coaster, there are three types of forces that your body will experience. First is positive G's. This is when your body is pushed back into the seat. You'll experience this like at the bottom of a giant drop, moving through a fast inversions or during helixes. I think the biggest issue with positive G's is they can cause headaches. This is why I think more coaster enthusiasts like airtime. But moving on, next we have laterals. This is where your body is pushed side to side. Old wooden coasters tend to have lots of laterals, basically because the engineering back in the day wasn't so good with banking during turns. So if you hit a turn with little to no banking, the laterals are going to be pretty strong. Finally, we come to negative G-forces, or airtime. This is where your body is lifted out of the seat. You will usually experience these forces at the top of a hill or moving through a slow inversion. Unlike the other forces that you'll experience on a roller coaster, most coaster enthusiasts will break down the type or intensity of the negative Gs by calling it floater air, ejector air, or hang time. The more intense moments of airtime are usually referred to as ejector air, while the more tame moments of airtime is called floater air. Because there's really no guideline as to what is considered ejector or floater, every enthusiast will have their own scale of intensity. One coaster fan might think a certain ride is all floater air, while another enthusiast will say it has spurts of ejector airtime. You really can't debate with them either because it's your own personal experience and no one can tell you elsewise what you experience. Okay, so let's talk about floater air. Hypercoasters, which is in short, any roller coaster over 200 feet, with stipulations, blah blah blah. But yeah, hypercoasters are well known to have great airtime, mostly floater airtime. Manufacturers like B&M and Morgan tend to build hypercoasters that feature hills with long moments of floater air. Riders will literally feel like they're floating out of their seat because technically you are. If you weren't strapped in, you'd be floating away to your death. So yeah, floater air is usually more extended out as ejector air hits rather intense but short. Wooden coasters are another roller coaster type that tend to have good amounts of airtime, floater airtime. There are a few exceptions like El Toro, Lightning Rod, if you consider it a wooden coaster, and debated Phoenix, which has some ejector airtime moments, but overall, you're mostly going to experience floater air on wooden coasters. Ejector airtime can be found on lots of variety of coasters, from wooden coasters, hybrids, hypers, gigas, launching coasters, and pretty much any traditional sit-down roller coaster. The manufacturer who's basically considered the king of ejector airtime, Rocky Mountain Construction, loves to include ejector airtime moments on their attractions. Basically, ejector airtime is when you feel like the ride is attempting to violently throw you out of your seat. So in other words, if you weren't strapped in, I highly doubt you would be able to hold yourself into the car. You're just not going to fall out. You'll probably fly a few feet above the train before making your way back down to Earth. I remember when I was standing in the line for El Toro, I watched countless cell phones fly out of people's pockets. It was literally raining iPhones. Broken iPhones. Also, no joke, I watched a water ball being launched about 50 feet above the train as it crested the hill. Then it came flying back down and exploded behind the train on the tracks. I don't think I could give a better example of airtime right there. So, which is better? Ejector airtime or floater airtime? Well, it comes down to preference. I love great ejector airtime moments, but not a huge fan of ejector airtime that's only like a fraction of a second. Steel Vengeance has tons of ejector airtime, but a lot of it's shorter pops of air, which is still great, don't get me wrong, but the first two airtime hills on Steel Vengeance deliver the longer sustained moments of airtime, which might classify closer to floater air, but yeah, it's great. Another great example of intense sustained ejector air is on Skyrush. That first airtime hill literally ejects you out of your seat, and that moment lasts for like a good second or two. 
El Toro, as already mentioned, has good sustained ejector airtime. But something to note, roller coasters can't give you moments that are too long of ejector airtime. This is because negative Gs are more dangerous to your body than positive Gs. During positive Gs, all the blood that is in your body is being pulled down, away from your brain, which causes grayouts and blackouts. Negative Gs, if strong enough, like say like negative 2 Gs, is sustained, blood is being pushed up into your brain, which will cause, well technically your head to explode. Well, okay, yeah, not really, but can cause red outs, which is like a reverse of blacking out. This can damage your retinals or possibly cause a hemorrhage stroke. So no worries though, the forces on a roller coaster will not reach these levels because of this very reasons. So back to floater airtime. There are some great floater airtime machines that I would say rival or even beat coasters that have ejector airtime. And the main reason is the amount offered. Steel Eel at SeaWorld San Antonio is loaded with airtime and because of the restraints used, you feel very unrestricted, thus allowing you to hover in your seat. Iron Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta Texas has strong negative Gs throughout, but the restraints are more restricting, making those moments, in my opinion, not as exciting. Of course, I'm not saying that Iron Rattler is bad or saying that Steel Eel is like a better roller coaster, just the style of restraints truly make a difference in how you would experience a roller coaster. Shoulder restraints can literally kill any fun with airtime, as a good lap bar will make you feel as you're floating in the sky. Well, I think that's it for today's video. Tell me, what do you prefer? Floater airtime? Ejector airtime? Or maybe you're one of those like coaster nerds who prefer positive Gs to negative Gs? Which, there's nothing wrong with that, I guess. Though it's not going to stop me from calling you weird. But let me know in the comments. Also, please subscribe, check out more of my content, and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.